When I set out to design a simple glider that resembled a jet aircraft, I attempted to use a series of steps known as the design process. In searching the internet for a definition, I found the steps that were listed varied from different sources of the definition. Summarizing the steps from different sources would include identifying a need or challenge, doing research, considering possible solutions, building, testing, and evaluation. I performed all those steps in designing a free flight catapult glider made from foam. From having built the foam plate gliders used in the Aerolab program, I got the idea to use the foam plate material in the glider I would design. Balsa wood works well for model airplanes but also has disadvantages. Foam plates and meat trays are made from a foam known as Depron. The smooth surface is due to a cell structure of fine closed cells which also makes it almost waterproof. Depron can be found in some hobby shops in large sheets but using the small pieces from foam plates and meat trays requires splicing. I looked at a couple of commercially available gliders made from foam. These models were rather attractive because of the graphics on the foam, but because they were put together without glue, the joints were not very solid. I built balsa prototypes to get an idea how the design would fly at a certain weight and to check for weaknesses in the design. Two balsa prototypes were built. One was entirely built from 1 16th balsa. The other used 1 32nd balsa for the surfaces. On the wing, the 1 32nd balsa was not strong enough to withstand the catapult launch. I decided to use the catapult method to launch my glider design. A rubber band is attached in a notch in front of the wing. My left hand holds a dowel attached to the other end of the rubber loop and I pull back on the rear of the fuselage, stretching the rubber tight. When releasing, with my right hand, the glider zooms at a great speed. I also built two foam prototypes. From the wing shattering with the 1 32nd inch balsa, I knew I needed to strengthen the foam wing, so I used tissue to cover both sides of the wing, glue stick for the adhesive. This did not prove strong enough either. After many hard launches, there was a compression crack in the top of the wing. I repaired this with some clear tape, which gave me the idea to use the tape entirely to strengthen the wing. Splice joints are staggered between the layers of foam a single layer of foam is strong enough for the tail surfaces. To replace the thin plywood in the nose, I used the cardboard from a milk cart. The fuselage has a thick foam core from the foam of a meat tray. Some glues will attack foam, such as model cement. I used white glue on the first foam prototype, but found a better glue to use on the second prototype. Foam works well for constructing all sizes of radio controlled slope soaring gliders. Gliders constructed from expanded polypropylene foam can normally withstand mid-air collisions with no damage. Foam Jet 2 was an improvement. With lighter weight, less drag on the fuselage and tail, and an improved airfoil, the glide was better. Launch height appeared to be about the same. After several full power launches, one wing panel began to bend. 
on inspection there was a compression crease in the top surface. I put more transparent tape on the wing near the center. Further tests with more tape in the center went well. There seems to be a very fine line between a glider that stalls and one that dives into the ground after launch. Small elevator adjustments can be made by very gently bending a small portion of the rear stabilizer. Another tip is to bank the launch opposite the direction the glider turns. Also, bending the trailing edge of the wing down creates more lift on a wing that is low. Looping is a big problem with catapult gliders where there is so much speed and consequently so much lift at the beginning of the launch. It is best to launch the glider with the wings banked at an angle so the glider spirals upward. This foam jet too was decorated with sharpie markers. It would have looked better if I would have used a straight edge to draw the lines. This is a higher performance hand launch glider that has a long, slow glide. Performance is better than my foam glider because of a larger wing area, more efficient airfoil, and a tiny fuselage resulting in less drag. Another method for launching a glider to altitude is by towing the glider with string and then releasing the line from the glider. The glider is pulled skyward much like a kite flies. This probably would not work well with a small glider but for a larger glider that is stable this works very well. I had this idea that one of the big foam gliders often found in toy stores might be easily adapted to function as a tow line glider. By adding a simple tow hook made from paper clip and a popsicle stick. I had a workable tow line glider. The glider flew too straight, so I added a trim tab made from pop can material glued to the vertical fin, and it could be bent to function as a rudder to create a turn. Singling is another foam catapult glider that reaches a high altitude on launch by folding the wing halves together. This results in less drag on launch and at the top of the launch the wing halves fold out and it starts a slow glide to the ground. <laughs> 